Luroy's Pokemon Blue Walkthrough, Part 30. What's going on, gang? Welcome back to the Pokemon Tower here in Lavender Town. I think right now we're on like the fourth or fifth floor or so. Um, we're probably about halfway done, so it's time to get back to the action, fighting some more of these crazy channelers. Give. Me. Blood. Oh, now we finally found one of the vampire channelers. It was only a matter of time, because we've already found all the zombie channelers, so... Yeah, no surprise that we found a vampire one as well. But yeah, this channeler wants my blood, so... We better make sure we don't lose this battle, otherwise we could be dead by the end of the day. Um, but yeah, let me switch out from Vulpix here. Um... I'm gonna go to Sol Oh, actually, no, I, I want to go back over to Sandslash, because he's only at level 28. Yeah, in the last video, I discovered the greatest thing ever about my Sand Slash, um, and that is the move Rock Slide. Because a few videos ago, I taught him this move, which is just ridiculous. As you can see from that animation. I'm just getting so much of a kick out of that. I'm glad you guys thought it was ridiculous, too. Um, someone in the comments was saying... One of the moves I think is maybe more ridiculous than Rock Slide is Surf, so yeah, I'm definitely also looking forward to um, getting Surf pretty soon on in the game, actually. Um, but yeah, back over to Vulpix. I'm seven levels away from learning Flamethrower, which is pretty awesome, but I still can't really get the job done against Gastly's, even though I'm six levels ahead of them. Um, good thing that Nightshade Mist will go with another epic Rock Slide. Yeah, that is just, that is just too much, man, that Rock Slide, but... Yeah, one big question that I was having in the last video, I was confused why um, Gastly's Lick Attack was not working on Hypno. Um, but apparently there was like a mix-up in first generation coding that made ghost types not work against psychics when they're actually supposed to be super effective. Um, and I'll go back over to Sand Slash. Someone actually had a good theory though. They said, well, psychic type Pokemon are supposed to be really smart, so... Um, smart enough that they don't believe in ghosts, and that's why the ghost type moves don't work on them. So yeah, I thought that was a pretty interesting theory. That guy got a lot of thumbs ups, but um, yeah, pretty interesting. Obviously, psychics are just way too genius that, yeah, they don't believe in ghosts, so they don't let Ghastly's Lick work against them, I guess. But of course, in the later games, ghosts became super effective against psychic. Yeah, psychic was a little too overpowered in this game. Um, only really being weak to bug types, which... There weren't any good bug type moves in first generation anyways, but um, let's go ahead and I think there's an item down here. Oops! Yeah, I just ran into a wild ghastly because I forgot to spray repels again at the start of the video, so I'll take care of that. And right here you can grab, oh, an X accuracy. Yeah, I actually don't mind X accuracies. They can be really useful if your opponent keeps using double team or sand attack or something. But yeah, here we go, another channeler! Key, 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 key. What is with the key, key, key that all the... Is that like some like weird cult chant that they do that's supposed to like summon the demons upon me or something? I'm getting a little nervous when I keep hearing them say key, 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 key all the time. But um, yeah, we're going back over to McLeod, but only to switch out, of course. Back over to Gara for this ghastly. And yeah, I said it again in the last video, I have to say it again, this is the dumbest sprite I've- This might be one of the dumbest sprites in first generation for Ghastly. Like, it looks nothing like Ghastly is supposed to look like at all, but... Yeah, speaking of things that look ridiculous on the screen in first generation, there's Rock Slide again for you. I feel like I'm gonna use this move like three times as much as I normally would, just so I can watch it happen on the screen. Oh, and there's the final chance! Key! Yeah, that's like the end of her prayer to bring the ghosts and demons back to life or something. I don't really want to know too much about their rituals and whatnot. Earth Quaw! Yeah, it looks like we have another zombie channeler! Yeah, I feel like this- once I'm done with this place, I should like call the authorities, then they can come through and just turn the Pokemon Tower into like a mental hospital. Because all of these people need some serious like psychiatric help or something. But I'm gonna go back over to Gara, even though he's kind of been getting banged up a little bit by all the nightshades. Oh, there's another nightshade! Well, that's gonna leave me with 18 hit points, so... Um, yeah, I better not risk Rock Slide missing, so I'll just go with a dig this time. Yeah, for once I'm not actually gonna use my favorite move ever, Rock Slide, but... Yeah, you know what, Gara? While you're down there in that hole on the floor below, stop in that healing spot and get your HP fully restored. Like, why not, right? Um, yeah, level 29. Yeah, I'm too lazy to walk all the way back down the stairs. That's too much work for me, man. But... 
That right there was actually the last battle with a channeler, so go ahead and grab this rare candy, um, and then that will open up the path to the very end of Pokemon Tower. Right here is the final ghost that you will find. Be gone, intruders. Oh yeah, here comes the epic battle with the ghost that you could not identify without the soap scope. But since we have the soap scope, we can find out that it is... A Marowak, which seems kind of random, uh, but the reasoning is that Team Rocket came to Pokemon Tower and they were trying to find the rare Cubone so that they could steal their skulls and sell them. Um, so Marowak, the mother of the Cubones, was trying to protect them and in the process was killed by Team Rocket. So now its ghost is here to haunt Pokemon Tower forever. And since it's only the ghost of Marowak, you actually cannot catch this thing. So even if you throw a Master Ball at it, um, you're not able to catch the Marowak. So you have to knock it out instead. So that's why I'm going over to War Turtle to use some Bubble Beams to finish it off. But um... Yeah, actually, there is. this is why you need the Silph Scope, otherwise you can't identify the Marowak. If you come in here without a Silph Scope, when you try to battle it, um, your Pokemon will be too scared to attack it. So, that's the reasoning for the Silph Scope. But anyways, after you finish off the battle, it will say, The ghost was the restless soul of Cubone's mother. The mother's soul was calmed. It departed to the afterlife. So yeah, once you kill the ghost of Marowak, it can, you know, in peace, go back to the afterlife. Um, so yeah, that's why you need the Silph Scope, so you can identify the Marowak and get past, um, you know, the ghost blocking your way to the last room. Now there is actually kind of like a glitch in the game that allows you to continue without the Silph Scope. If you get the Polka Doll at the Celadon Mart, um, in the battle you can use the Polka Doll to leave the battle, because that item, um, pretty much lets you leave any battle, and it's, yeah, it's kind of like a glitch, I guess, that, um, the Polka Doll can get you out of having to get the Silph Scope. What do you want? Why are you here? Yeah, we got Team Rocket Grunts. These are the guys that were trying to steal Cubone's souls and the ones that killed Marowak. Like, holy crap, they killed a Pokemon. What's that all about, man? What did Marowak ever do to you? Um, but yeah, they've got Zubats on their team, so I guess they'll actually finally fight with Vulpix for once. Um, yeah, Team Rocket, some real jerks. They're just in here stealing Cubone's skulls, killing Marowaks. Like, seriously, have some class, guys. Um, but yeah, then you gotta knock out a few of these Team Rocket grunts to see what's going on at the very top of Pokemon Tower. And now I'm at level 29, which is awesome. Yeah, Vulpix, believe it or not, is my highest leveled Pokemon now. Even though it's probably my worst Pokemon in battle, um, yeah, my highest leveled Pokemon, so... Yeah, we still need to get him up six more levels before I'm ready to evolve him. And good thing that Supersonic missed, so one more Ember, we'll finish it off. And there we go! So, um, yeah, actually, I think, yeah, his next Pokemon is a Golbat, which is awesome because there's nothing better than this Golbat sprite just sticking out its slobbery tongue. One of the goofiest, ugliest looking sprites in the game for sure. But yeah, I'll bring it over to Usain Volt to take it down with the Thunderbolt. And once again, the Seattle Supersonic missed, so, yeah, I guess I got kind of lucky there. Um, but yeah, this is the first time you've seen a Golbat in the game. The evolved form of Zubat. There's no such thing as Crobat, the third stage of the evolution in red and blue, but yeah, in this game, Golbat's the best he can do. I give up, he says. Um, I'm not going to forget this. Yeah, I hope you do never forget it, man. So yeah, after you defeat these Team Rocket grunts, they will walk out of the building. And I definitely need to heal up. Um, actually, I don't need a whole super potion. I might just see a potion. Um, do I even have a potion? I might not. Alright, whatever, we'll use the Super Potion. I could walk all the way down to the healing spot, but I might as well use these items since I have them. Um, but yeah, let's go for round two of the Team Rocket Grunts. Yeah, definitely starting to see more of Team Rocket at this point in the game. This old guy came up and complained about us harming useless Pokemon! Well yeah, I would be pretty mad too if guys up here were just killing Pokemon for no reason. But apparently they're talking it over as adults, so yeah, that's good. Leave it to Team Rocket to go over things as reasonable adults, right? <laughs> but here's another Rocket, he's got a coughing. Alright, so I guess I'll switch out once again. You know what, I'll switch back out to Voltorb, because Voltorb still needs to get up levels. He's only level 27 and getting pretty close to evolving to Electrode. Um, but yeah, actually, I always thought it was cool that you could use the Polka Doll to avoid getting the Silph Scope. You can essentially skip the entire Rocket Hideout at the game corner, and yeah, kind of just skip like a pretty significant part of the game where you meet Giovanni and all. Um, but yeah, anyways, let's finish off this coughing here. 
It will be pretty exciting when Usain Volt gets fully evolved into an Electrode. Just because I haven't had an Electrode for so long. It's been forever. It's been like years since I've had an Electrode on my team. Um, in fact, I kind of want to get Usain Volt some more experience. I mean, Voltix is already at 29, so I guess if anyone needs experience points right, right now, it's Voltorb, so... Yeah, I'll keep him in for this Drowsy, even though it's a pretty good special defensive Pokemon. And there's a Headbutt! Yeah, last thing you want to do is get headbutted by a Drowsy, but... Go with another Thunderbolt! And another critical hit! I'm getting all kinds of critical hits, but... Critical hits are a lot more common when you have a faster Pokemon. And I'm at level 28, so there we go. Two levels away from evolution. That should be coming up very soon. Please, no more! Oh, yeah, is, is that what Marowak's final words were, you freaking jerk? Pokemon are only good for making money. Stay out of our business! Well, yeah, I agree, they're good for making money in battle, but... No, you're not supposed to steal Cubones and Skulls and sell them. I mean, where's the market for Cubones Skulls anyways? You're not saving anyone, kid. Well, if you're the last guy I have to go through, I probably will be saving somebody up here. But yeah, where's the market for, like, where are there tons of people just dying to buy Cubone Skulls? Like, seriously, is that just, like, some great novelty that everyone's dying to have? Um, anyways, he's got a Zubat, so... Zubat's one of the only Pokemon I kind of feel comfortable with Vulpix actually fighting. Um, just because I know I can get it done pretty quickly. And I finally got Seattle Supersonics, dang it. Um, I'll fight through it. Alright, there we go. Yeah, way to keep your head on straight, Vulpix. Not too confused to knock out a Zubat with Ember. Um, and yeah, closing in on that Flamethrower. Pretty excited about it. But since I'm confused, I'll probably switch out here. Um, who else? I feel like everyone else is kind of at the... Even, yeah, everyone's at 28 or 20. Actually, whatever, it's a Rattata. I can take this thing even when I'm confused, why not? Yeah, there we go, Double Edge. I'm really glad I taught Vulpix Double Edge. It's kind of random, you wouldn't expect a Vulpix to be whipping out a Double Edge, but definitely a lot better than Ember. Um, wow, I'm like three for three with not hitting myself in confusion. This is like the greatest day of my life. It's like all I've ever wanted to do is just not hit myself in confusion consistently. Um, next up we got Eradicate, so yeah, this is probably one I'll have to switch out for. Um, but I will get a lot of experience points from it. Um, yeah, it would probably make Gary kind of sad to see uh, a Eradicate in here since that's the Pokemon that he came to pay respects for dying. But yeah, I'm going over to War Turtle. Not really sure why, but I guess he can use a level up, so let's go with a Bubble Beam. My go-to move. And yeah, like I was mentioning earlier, one of the moves that could potentially compete with Rock Slide for looking the most ridiculous would be um, Surf, which is actually the move that's going to be replacing Bubble Beam for War Turtle's main same type attack bonus move. Um, and that's actually coming up in the next city, which I'm pretty excited about, but I won't get too ahead of myself. I'll talk about that after I finish off this last Zubat, so let's go back over to Vulpix. Um, Actually, better idea, let's go over to Voltorb, because, well, yeah, I guess my Thunderbolt's super effective, but, yeah, Voltorb is actually lower on levels. He really needs to level up a couple more times, so. Another Thunderbolt will easily take out this Zubat, and just like that, we have defeated all of the Rocket Grunts up here. So, yeah, this is our, um, latest run in with Team Rocket. Really not too tough of a challenge. The main mission is, involves getting the Silph Scope through Team Rocket, but, yeah, then you have a few more Team Rocket Grunts trying to stop you, and he says, you're not getting away with this. Well, guess what? I just got away with it, man. What are you going to do about it? So yeah, then over here you have these statues, and this is actually Mr. Fuji. Hey, you came to save me? Yeah, Mr. Fuji was a dude that was actually missing earlier in Lavender Town, but apparently he came here on his own free will. He came to calm the soul of Cubone's mother. Oh yeah, the Marowak that I just killed. Well, apparently all you have to do to calm the soul of it is go into battle and destroy it with a couple of bubble beams. I think Marowak's spirit has gone to the afterlife. Yeah, I might have had something to do with that. I don't know, should I feel bad about like brutally killing Marowak for a second time to send him back to the afterlife? I don't know, but at least I got the ghost to stop haunting this place. Um, but yeah, Mr. Fuji's glad that I had concern for the, you know, restless Pokemon, the restless spirit, so he's gonna invite me back to his house, and yeah, you might recognize this place back in Lavender Town, this is Mr. Fuji's house, and he has finally returned since we saved him from Team Rocket, so he says, Leroy, your Pokedex quest may fail without your love for your Pokemon. I think this may help with your quest. 
So then he's gonna reward you with the Poke Flute, an awesome item. Upon hearing the Poke Flute, sleeping Pokemon will spring awake, and it works on all sleeping Pokemon. So for one, the Poke Flute is awesome because anytime your Pokemon get put to sleep by a Jigglypuff or whatever in battle, the Poke Flute can always wake them up. So yeah, you can go ahead and play your Poke Flute. Now that's a catchy tune! Yeah, great, great item in the Poke Flute. Anyways, let's talk to these guys now that Mr. Fuji's back. He's been praying alone for Cubone's mother. I feel bad, man! I killed the dead mother of Cubone! It was already dead and I killed it. Um, but yeah, whatever. Anyways, what's really great about the Poke Flute is the fact that it can wake up a certain sleeping Snorlax that might happen to be blocking your path. So, there is a sleeping Snorlax just south of Lavender Town over here. Um, it was actually on the outs- you know what, let's go back over here, I like the music better. Um, but yeah, right by Lieutenant Surge's gym, we actually, um, I think it was Route 8, we ran into a sleeping Snorlax, and there's also one on the west end of Celadon City. So, you can go to either of those Snorlaxes and wake them up, and then you can start your long quest to Fuchsia City. So yeah, I have two options. I can go west of Celadon and take the cycling road, which is the quickest way to Fuchsia City, or I can go south of here and take the super long chain of routes that leads to Fuchsia City. So I'm not sure which one I'm going to do yet, but I will decide this week, and we will continue on Saturday this weekend, um, and we will start heading towards Fuchsia City. See you guys then. Thanks for watching.